What's up, table wrapper? What's up, Miss Mess? Miss Mess, why am I messy? Uh, just be I think your your life just tends to be messy right now. <laughs> I swear, everywhere. <laughs> I went to the post office today. Wait a minute. Like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Am I wrong? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. And literally, most of the time when people ask me how I am, I say fine. And lately, when people have been like, "How have you been?" I'm like, "I've been not great. <laughs> Everything is terrible. Everything bad keeps happening to me. It's very exhausting for me." But I was gonna say, I went to the post office today on and saw our, our friend lady, and she's like, "How have you been?" I'm like, "Fucking shitty." <laughs> <laughs> I did that to someone in the elevator this weekend. Ah, I can't like lie. I can't be like, oh my God, I've been so good. There was a guy in the elevator this weekend for the event that I was at. And it was <laughs> early in the morning. I hadn't had any coffee. I hadn't had a cigarette, nothing. And I was going down to the first floor. And he was like early morning chipper, which I am not at all. Any Never. Ever. And I got on the elevator and he was all smiling. He was like, hey, good morning. How you doing? And I looked at him and I go, I just fucking woke up, man. Right? <laughs> and he we goes, are, okay. <laughs> do our Enfield voice and be like, I'm not good. I just fucking woke up. I just woke up. I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I am the worst morning person ever. You're like 10 times better than I am. Well, yeah, because I jump up, fell out of bed, drag the comb across my no head. Do you have no head? I mean, no hair. Mm. I was trying to do a Beatles thing, but I realized they said head and hair is different things. You're a headless horseman. Hairless horseman. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that often that we get to name the episode title this early. <laughs> 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 That's a real spooky tradition nobody talks about. A hairless horseman. He's a completely bald horseman on a completely bald horse. <laughs> no body hair and a, and a nude horse. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so anyway, so I called you a table wrapper at the beginning of this episode because it's a spiritualist thing because you went to Strange Escapes at where? Palmyra, New York, which is the home of the Fox sisters who in the 1840s made rapping and tapping and communicating with ghosts a thing because when they were girls in their house, there was the legend that, you know, there was a peddler buried in the walls and they started hearing strange knocks in the house and then the girls started saying they could communicate with the ghosts through knocking and rapping mm -hmm. and so we went to uh the remains the foundation of the house is the only thing that's there it's like a museum kind of yeah so the strange escapes was in palmyra we did lectures at the hotel that everybody was staying at and then there were two different groups two nights and both nights we went to the building foundation and then after that, we went to the Palmyra Museum and did investigations there. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Cute. Very cute. Is Palmyra famous for anything else or just the Fox sisters? Uh, the first Mormon Bible was printed there. Well, that is very exciting. Joseph, <laughs> <laughs> Joseph Smith, uh, the guy who created Mormonism, his family home is like 17 miles away. Oh, that's interesting. But yeah, the house, the actual house that the Fox sisters were living in at a certain point, someone bought it because they realized oh this is going to be like the home of spiritualists this is going to be like the home of where spiritualism started and so he moved it to lilydale mm. and then in 1955 the house burned to the ground dang so the only thing that really remains is the foundation in in palmyra what's on top of it isn't it like covered yeah they put a covering over it so the you know it doesn't get rained on and snow it on and you can go there any time of year got it that's weird i guess cool they saved something though yeah for sure and if anybody is interested in the Fox Sisters stories, you can read deeply into it and on it. There's lots of documentation because, you know, eventually the sisters said that they faked the whole thing and they were just like cracking their toes and popping their knuckles and that, that was making the rapping sound. But then as they got older, they said that they faked saying it was fake. So it gets all wishy-washy in that world. Yeah, I kind of thought it was like they said that some of it was fake, but like not all of it was fake. And then when somebody said that it's like how the fuck are you supposed to <laughs> yeah i mean the problem is right and i said this to people at the event the only two real witnesses we have to the events are maggie and katie fox the fox sisters and we have their testimony
testimony. Like that's the only real two people that knew if it was real or fake. Mm -hmm. And the only information that we can draw from them is that they are unreliable narrators to the story because they say it's fake, then they say it's not, then they say it is, then they say it's not. And so you're just left scratching your head. Well, still cool. It was still very cool, very fun, big part of psychical spirit research. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, we did investigations, but in the museum, you know, with me, it's always just kind of story time with Tenny. Mm -hmm. And so we all sat around a Christmas tree in this museum and I told spooky ghost stories of long, long ago. And on uh, Saturday night, I brought some Zenner cards with me and I had everybody do like try and guess psychic cards. And that was pretty mm -hmm. fun. That is fun. And Amy Bruni would randomly call me on the phone and tell my group to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was up. She was upstairs. The re one of the reasons we couldn't investigate is Amy's group was directly above us, so everything was just like knocking and tapping, and you could hear voices. And there's no way to do a real good investigation for that. Yeah, it's weird that she called you and you actually answered. <laughs> The weird thing on Saturday night was when we went to the Fox sisters cabin, we were, everybody was inside and this gentleman came out and said that he wasn't feeling well. Mm. And so he just kind of went and sat down outside and then the lights in the covered area where the foundation of the house is, the lights started going on and off. Like there's a physical switch that no one was standing near and the lights were going on and off. And then another woman, Heather said that she was feeling a really heavy presence there. Then later on at the investigation, at the museum like people were super aggro mm. and as we were leaving the investigations were wrapping up just a random guy from the town of Palmyra fell down in the parking lot of the museum and had a seizure and like ambulance and police cars had to come and take him away. What the fuck? Yeah, very strange. That is a lot of stuff. There was a lot of stuff. Dang. Well, I thought I always wanted to go there, but I don't know about that. And then both nights we had super long after investigation, after event hangouts. Mm -hmm. Like the first night it went until like 4.30 in the morning. Everybody just sitting around on the couches in the lobby of the hotel just talking about weird shit. And then the same thing happened on Saturday night too. It was awesome. Nice. Good hanging time with people, friends, and pates. We're going to have more of that this week because we're going to Bobby Mackey's. Oh, geez. A haunted hippo honky tonk. Mm. We're taking a group, Patreons, to Bobby Mackey's and the Cincinnati Zoo and Olive Garden. And we're staying at a haunted hotel. And I'm excited. It's going to be a whirlwind. It's going to be a whirlwind. Who was I telling? Oh, yeah. I had tattoo clients yesterday and today. And I was telling one of my clients yesterday, I'm like, I'm going to. I'm investigating one of the most haunted places in the country on Thursday. And she's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't hear that every day. Yeah, I'm excited. And fun. you've never been to Bobby Mackey's, right? Mm -mm. You know, I was talking to Adam Berry and he's never been there either. And there's a story and he said, I can tell everybody, but I'm not going to tell it right now, but I am going to tell it when we're there. <laughs> what? Yeah. Should I bring my acoustic guitar? Did I ask you that? And then I called you Barbie movie because you're just subject, you're just making us sit there and listen to you play guitar like Ken. I mean, maybe the Honky Tonk Ghost would like to hear me play some Willie Nelson songs. Oh yeah, I did forget that we're going to a Honky Tonk bar. <laughs> That's why I wanted to bring it. You can if you want. No, forget it. I don't want to subject everybody to that. Sorry, people. I'm sure they would like it. We have three hours there. What the fuck else are we going to do? We're going to investigate that place and the portal to hell that's in the basement. The portal to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to do the Enfield voice the whole time we're there. Yeah, I'm going to bring some stuff. I have a recorder and an EMF detector, but I want those cat balls. I need to light up cat balls, and I don't have any. I have some cat balls if you want me bring to bring the cat balls. I'll bring the cat balls. Do you have any raccoon repellent? Because that's what's down in that basement. Well, we want them there. Let's hang out. <laughs> that's the demons that are running around down there. Those are the kind I do like. I want a raccoon friend. Well, if you say that, though, on like a paranormal show, if you're like, we're going down into this basement where there's a portal to hell and a lot of raccoons. <laughs> and five furry friends. <laughs> and a hairless horseman. And a hairless horseman. What could happen next? <laughs> I love how every paranormal show voice, we're just essentially doing Ghost Adventures voice. Yeah, just doing a version <laughs> of, of Zach's voice. Everybody just reverts to, what would happen <laughs> 
so stupid. Um, but yeah, hopefully we have some activity. It should be sweet. I'm excited. It'll be fun. And we get to see Fritz and Fiona again. Uh, the hippos. The hippos, our favorite people. Did I tell you? I didn't tell. Uh, I think I did tell you. So d I bought my dad all the Marvel movies. Yes, you did say it last episode on here. Yes, yes. He's watched all of them. <laughs> Jeez. He called me yesterday. He was like, I'm all done watching those films. Now what do I do? I was like, those are supposed to last you through winter. Dang. He needs an allowance of DVD money. I know. He says he doesn't like Thor because it's a little too outer spacey and weird. Does he know that none of those people are real? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said to him. I was like, you understand these are comic book movies, right? <laughs> like Iron Man isn't real. <laughs> Oh my God. He drives me crazy and he's not even my dad. Oh, your sister texted me when you were gone and said, well, I was already better pretty much from being sick, but she's like, if you need anything, just let me know. She's so cute. They love me. She's the best. She is the best. Oh, that was the thing. One of my tattoo clients yesterday, she's going to U of M. And I'm like, my bestie's sister works there. I'm like, I don't fully understand what she does though. <laughs> I still really don't understand what my sister does. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what your sister's job is, and I don't know what my own dad's job is. I don't know what my job is. I don't know what my <laughs> Professional wackadoo. <laughs> That would be a good title, too. That would be a good title. Oh, I read, speaking of raccoons and animals and hippos and all the things, I read that um, Santa's reindeer, okay, so male and female reindeer apparently have antlers, but males lose their antlers in late November to early December, and female reindeers keep their antlers till spring, so technically that means all of Santa's reindeers are girls. Oh, that's interesting. I know, isn't that cute? Yeah. I know, I like that fun fact. Well, I mean, all of their names are genderless, right? I should answer, answer this in comment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, Rudolph is a good boy name. <laughs> all the other ones are pretty, could be either way, though. Right. That's interesting. I never knew that. I know. I liked it. I was excited. And then you said, and then we were going to bring up our, we are having our Woopod and Friends YouTube live show next Friday, December 22nd from 6 to 9, free on YouTube with a Patreon only after show. And then you were like, let me show you the new artwork for the show. And then you put antlers on me and I'm like, well, guess what? About what? I was going to tell you this cute thing about antlers. <laughs> <laughs> that was a real conversation that's funny yes that's how it tied in so yeah we're gonna have a youtube live show do we know who the guests are no do we know what the giveaways are gonna be no, no. Do we know what we're doing no no is it gonna be fun yes you know what i don't understand about i'm thinking about antlers now you know what i don't understand about antlers they have that velvet that comes off no that's the, no i understand that that's yucky to me i, I find it unsettling do you know what antler means what it means before the eye that makes sense but it's behind the eye yeah but if it would be i don't know it depends on where you're starting from your measurement from <laughs> <laughs> i guess i guess you're right i have been proven wrong uh, uh, foiled again today. jessica super genius <laughs> You know what else I learned? Because we get to see the giraffes this week again, and we, we've gotten to feed them now. Well, I got to feed them twice because I went another time and you didn't go. But anyway, I learned on TikTok this week that those, first of all, those horn things that they have, they have a really weird word name that I never heard before. It's like <laughs> ocel... Wait, what is it called? What, like those little, those little bumpy antlers they got? Yeah, the knobby things are called like ocetopes or something. They have a very weird word name. Anyway, apparently they like love getting those rubbed on, and I'm like, what if I can rub the giraffe's knobby things this week? <laughs> <laughs> So I have to see if that's allowed. I don't know. Because when we fed them before, we could like touch their nose. Got to rub those G-knobs. I got to rub the G-knobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Do you know, did you know, a lot of antler talk here. Lots of knobby antler animal uh, protruding things talk. You know, I have two uh, giant moose antler in my house. Yes, I want those. I know. But on moose, the way that their antlers are kind of thick in the middle mm -hmm. those actually act like uh parabolic reflectors for their ears yeah like they're like sound cones yeah 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 they got like satellite dishes on their heads this is like our national geographic episode of Woo <laughs> <laughs> all we're talking about is weird animal oh this ties in another thing i want to tell you about but i can't spoil it but i watched a new horror movie that dropped on demand like streaming what is it called like video 
yeah, video on demand, rental, whatever the fuck. There's a new Christmas horror movie called A Creature Was Stirring. The people who are in it are, you know that This Is Us show? I never watched it. but Yeah, I, know I didn't watch it either. I watched the original uh, Japanese version, which is called Attack of the Mushroom People. That's not real. <laughs> Actually, it is. <laughs> they bring a show, a Japanese show called Attack of the Mushroom People. <laughs> no, this no, is no, us. No. No, 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 no. That's there was so a nice. Japanese movie in the 60s called Attack of the Mushroom People. And when This Is Us came out and I found out it was all about like mushroom zombie infection. That's not, we're not talking about the same show. Oh, we're not? No, you're talking about all, it's called All of Us? What well, is I it? Don't, <laughs> I don't know. What are you, you're talking about that show with Pedro Pascal, aren't you? Yes. I'm not talking about that show. Oh, I was talking about that show. This is also on like NBC and it's like a fucking... Oh, is it the heartbreaky show? Yes. That really went crazy places. Anyway, so... The Last of Us. That's what you were thinking of, yes. Yes. This is a mess. Any fucking... Oh my God. Circling back. We can really talk about Attack of the Mushroom People later though. But anyway, Chrissy Metz, who was on This Is Us, is in this A Creature Was Stirring movie. And also Scout Taylor Compton, who was in the Halloween movies. And then also this kid who was on Gossip Girl is in it. And it was good. It was a creature movie. I thought, listen, the trailer, I thought it was going to be a home invasion movie. And it's a straight up weird fucking creature movie. And it's like, I can't spoil it, but it does tie into like all of the animals that we've been talking about in this episode randomly but it's kind of like a werewolf movie but not a, it's not a werewolf the 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 main person who's having an issue turns into something and it's really fucking crazy but it's the directing is really cool it's really bright you know how there's like oversaturated color horror movies now yes. kind of it's like that i really like how it looks and the gore was really good and funny it's like it's definitely not gonna be for everybody because it's fucking weird as fuck and it's not like a serious horror movie but i kind of liked it well there you go anyway it's called the creature was stirring it's on on demand now does the if a creature was stirring i'm gonna does the person turn into a mouse no <laughs> all random and it, it, and it plays like a straightforward horror movie for like a lot of the movie and then it does that and then there's like it's it's crazy i feel like you would kind of like it well i'll give it a watch yeah it's pretty weird i liked it did you watch the other only other thing i watched i watched last night did you watch it's on a lot of people's best of the year horror list but it's kind of not a horror movie but anyway do you watch that brooklyn 45 movie no no idea what that is it's like world war ii and like most of the the people in the cast were like in the war or like involved with the war and they all have like like guilt kind of and like all did like fucked up shit and they're like trying to move on with their life so anyway the one it's not really a spoiler but the one guy's Basically, the premise of the movie is the one guy's wife has killed herself, but nobody fucking knows why that gets flushed out. But he invites all of his friends over who are these war people to have a fucking seance to contact his dead wife. And it's really cool. Like the room is stunning. Like the surroundings are so pretty. It looks really old and the acting is really good. And the ghost, like the, the seance that they do is sweet. It's really good. It's it's really good. Well, I guess I'll watch it then. I think you would really like it. That's what I was thinking when I was watching it. I'm like, I feel like Sonny would love this movie, but but yeah. Uh, what else could I say about it? I don't know. I, I was really impressed. It's just really well done. And I feel like it's like a lower budget movie. And I'm like, how the fuck did they do all this for like a limited budget? It, it, it looks like it costs like millions of dollars we're getting to that point though it's nuts what people can do like with a small cast and like doing everything yourself because another thing that was crazy to me was it's set in brooklyn but they didn't film it in brooklyn because i feel like it was during the pandy and they couldn't it looks like an old brownstone it looks like a hundred year old parlor room with like bookshelves and and uh molding and all this crazy shit like it looks so rich and then there's like press notes that the guy sent me that who made it and and they fucking built that whole thing on a soundstage. It's not real. He built the whole thing. I'm like, how? I was shook. I'm like, this looks so good and rich and real. And there's like old art on the walls. I have no idea how they did that. People are genius when it comes to that. You need the right people. It's so impressive. It's seriously so impressive. But anyway, I want. I think I want to invite that guy who wrote and directed it on our YouTube live show next weekend. Do anything you want. Yeah, he seems really nice. And, and oh, also he wrote and directed this other horror movie that came out in 2015 called We Are Still Here. And there's actually a seance in that movie too. So that like leads me to believe, I feel like he, and like 
thinking about how you were just at the Fox sisters house. I'm like, this guy's definitely into seances and like has some kind of deep interest in the paranormal because he keeps going back to it. And he's like pretty freaking good at pulling it off and like doing it um convincingly in movies. So well, throw out a line to him, see if he responds. I know I feel bad because it's like we're doing it a few days before Christmas. So if like people are busy, I do understand that. But maybe if he can't this time, we'll get him on the next one. But yeah, yeah. But you guys, yeah, that movie's called Brooklyn 45. It's on Shudder, I believe, but you can rent it on like any like if you go on Amazon or like any rentable video on demand platform. But yeah, that's what I did last night. I actually watched that and his older movie, the We Are Still Here one. You haven't watched Godzilla versus the Smog Monster yet? I have not. Is it on any platform right now? I'm sure it's gotta be. It's a Godzilla movie. It's gotta be somewhere. Even an obscure one like us. A... None of the Godzilla movies are obscure. Are you kidding me? I don't know anything about them. Well, you could probably also watch Matango. I think that's on Tubi. What is that? Matango is Attack of the mushroom people <laughs> that was just literally in my brain after you said that i'm like oh good i can circle back and ask him about the mushroom people now yeah so that's that's the japanese name of the movie matango matango attack of the mushroom people what's interesting for people who might be slightly interested in watching that mm-hmm. <laughs> is it's based on a short story by William Hope Hodgson, mm-hmm. who was also a psychical researcher. Ooh, everything ties together in this episode so good. Kind of does. Both of us sit down and go, I have nothing to talk about. And then we both talk about all separate things that go together. Yeah. And antlers for 10 and minutes. Antlers for an extended period of time. <laughs> That's where our podcast works. I really feel like there's probably people out there who think well, that we like practice or that we know what we're going to say. I We never have any freaking idea what we're going to say on here. It's a wonder we ever say correct or interesting thing. I, yeah. How long do you guys take to script out what you're going to talk about? You can call me at 945 and I say, I'll call you at 945. And then you say, no, you can just call me now. Yeah. <laughs> so then I just call you now and then we just start riffing. Yeah. I just worked uh, for a while and then I I stopped at Walgreens on the way home and now I'm on here and we just say what we feel is in our brain. Yeah. She wanna, I don't want to get on here and complain every week, but listen, speaking of me stopping at Walgreens on the way home, I had to get ketchup because I'm not a fucking ketchup and a 32 ounce ketchup at Walgreens was eight dollars eight dollars that's somebody's whole hourly wage to buy a ketchup yeah this is unreal i hate it here you know what people are gonna start doing stealing ketchup that's what i do i'm gonna do it no i mean like whenever i go anywhere i ask for like could i have like 15 ketchups then they put them in the bag and then i have a squeeze bottle at home and i spend like 10 minutes squeezing all the packets into my squeeze bottle <laughs> Okay, I, I haven't gotten to that psychotic range yet, but I, what I will do is just grab the bottle and put it in my fucking jacket because I'm sick of this nonsense. There you go. Ketchup's at the Dollar Tree. All of us should be stealing from corporations. Yes. Ketchup is at the Dollar Tree. Yeah, but it's not Heinz. It's fucking probably watery, weird salt. Oh, juju. Gotta have your Heinz. I actually don't. When I'm, I usually get my shit from Target and I'll just get Target brand, but I don't have time for any of that right now. I just needed, because listen, the reason I went there is because I put shredded cheese on Toad's food and I was out of shredded cheese. So I'm like, I need the cheese. I need the ketchup. And then I'm leaving. And I brought in $20 and I almost didn't have enough for a ketchup and a cheese. (laughs) (laughs) I'm leaving this country. I'm getting so radicalized lately. I fucking hate everything. I had twenty dollars. I almost didn't have enough for a ketchup and a cheese. I swear, I got. Listen, I swear to you right now. This is what I got: bottle of ketchup, pack of shredded cheese, little bag of corn nuts, and one twenty ounce Pepsi. And it was fucking nineteen (laughs) dollars. That's unreal. That should be seven dollars. Anyway, so grumpy. Do you want the one last thing that I thought was interesting? I saw somebody tweet today and it said, do you think that deja vu is your brain recognizing alternate realities and this is your chance to choose a different path? And I read it again and I was like, whoa. No, (laughs) no. No. What do you think it is? There are like three or four different types of deja vu, but the most common one that people have is part of your fight or flight psychological defense mechanism of your brain, which is something will trigger it. You might not notice what the trigger is. It can be like a real slight smell. It can be like a temperature like that triggers it. Mm -hmm. And so what your body does is it tries to relax you by putting you in a situation that seems familiar. And so instead of getting information in your eyes, into your recognition, short-term memory, long-term memory, that's kind of how the process works in that order. Mm -hmm. It takes information in through your eyes, throws it directly into your long-term 
short-term memory and then brings it into short-term and recognition. So as you're looking at something, you're actually remembering it and what happens it, because it wants to put you in a place where you, you recognize. But when it does that, because the system has been interrupted and goes backwards, you get this endorphin rush, which makes you feel like you're frightened when you're having it. Mm -hmm. And then that endorphin rush kicks your senses back into their normal situation and then it fades out like a dream. Weird. And that is deja vu. I don't know if I fully fucking understand what you just said. <laughs> this, is first, this is not the first time and it won't be the last. <laughs> but what is what you're saying that in that moment, the thing is happening for the first time and then you like instantly forget it and realize what's happening again? Yes, it goes instead of going in your eyes into recognition and then mm -hmm. into memory. Mm -hmm. It goes in your eyes straight into memory and then brings it into recognition. Yeah, see, I did understand it. You did understand it. Yay for me. <laughs> <laughs> What's really funny is there's also jamais vu, which is the opposite of deja vu. Mm. And people just write it off as having a bad memory. But jamais vu is like when you get up and walk into a room and then you have no idea why you walked into the room. Oh, so I just have that 20 fucking times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Never knew what it was called. Cool. It's the experiencing, uh, the feeling that you're unfamiliar with something you're very familiar with. Got it. Like sometimes that'll probably happen to you if you're watching. I'm sure, I mean, it happens to everybody, but for you, like a good example would be you're watching 90210 and you're like, I've never fucking seen this before, but you know you've seen it before. Oh, yeah. That happens a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's jamais vu. What's the thing where we say where you drive down the same road all the time and then all of a sudden you see a new house and you're like, I've never seen that house before, but you know in your brain you've seen it a million times? So that's TEP. That's transient environment phenomena. Yeah, I like that. And that might be something paranormal. That might be you slipping in and out of alternate dimensions. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, because you might be just like you drive to work every single day for 10 years down the same road. And then one day you're like, well, there's a fucking bank there. And you've yeah. never, never seen the bank in your life. Yeah. <laughs> it weirds me out because that happens to me a lot in Royal Oak. Like I've lived here my whole life. And like I basically know where the cracks in the sidewalks are at this point. And then I'll be like, there's a fucking park over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a whole goddamn park. <laughs> It is like hard for us to, and I, I was just thinking this the other day because we're so inundated with like, like how many things do I look at on Twitter every day? Like not even kidding, probably fucking 5,000 things a day. It's crazy that like humans since whenever the fuck have had like the same functioning probably percentage of their brain, right? But in the past, we were only forced to remember like fucking not that many things. And now we're forced to remember so many things and our brain's like, nope, not doing it. You, I'm tapped out. This is where I stop. Like, I can't, I can't evolve with you people to remember all the things in the entire universe. Yeah, I can't remember where I read this. It was many years ago. It was an anthropology paper and they were saying like, for the majority of times that humans have existed up until like maybe 200 years ago yeah. so for tens of thousands of years before that mm -hmm. most people would only know or meet like 35 other people in their whole life yeah <laughs> Like you yeah, only ever had to know 30 of fucking people. You only had to know like 35 names your whole life. Yeah. And most of them were your family. Yeah. Now I know of thousands of people. I somehow know a lot of their birthdays, uh, where everybody lives, what their fucking screen name is, what their pets names are. And then every fucking famous person, every song that's ever come out, every movie that's ever come out, like what am I doing? <laughs> My brain's going to explode. <laughs> And what's even crazier is that every piece of information that you've experienced since you were a child is still stored in your brain somewhere. I know. And then people are like, brain fog, brain fog. It's like, no, it's just like, it's literally done. Every cell in your fucking brain is like, <laughs> had it. It's fucking had it. It's crazy. That's if you and the information in your brain is actually stored in your brain and not stored off site somewhere else. Yeah, in the, in all the informational cloud of like us just being meat suits and our you know what i'm saying yes us just being a television receiver and the program is somewhere else yes our consciousness yes the big problem yes that's what consciousness researchers call consciousness the big problem the big problem because no one understands it that's what i'm gonna start calling you <laughs> the fucking problem and i don't understand anything here <laughs> I do, though. I do. I play stupid, but I'm actually really smart. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I like how we go from talking about the deepest, smartest shit to like, <laughs> draft knobs. How do they work? <laughs> 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 uh, 
actually the cognition in the brain starts through visual perception and moves into slight also moose antlers are like big radar dishes <laughs> Uh, moose is here better because of the antlers. <laughs> I don't know why that reminded me, but my client today literally said out loud, I hope when I come back to life, I come back as a duck because that would be cool that I could swim all the time. <laughs> I could not disagree. I was like, I always thought I would want to come back as a squirrel, but a duck does sound pretty good. And they probably have less predators. They just want oh, All animals got predators. I know they do. And then we were thinking, then it like evolved into, I'm like, I think though ducks and squirrels have pretty short lifetimes and then we decided that if you wanted to swim all the time and come back as an animal the correct choice would be a tortoise or like a turtle sea turtle or something yeah because then you'd live longer so what you're saying is you want to be like the jonathan the tortoise is that like the oldest one he's the oldest living tortoise on the planet is he like 200 he's 187 yeah he's a fucking legend legend <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. wandering around eating lettuce all day long. I can talk about when humans only used a little bit of their brain back in 187 years ago. Yep. Back when he was just a wee baby tortoise. <laughs> Shout out, Jonathan. Future Patreon. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Jonathan the tortoise matured. He reached maturity at the age of 50. We're still waiting for you to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. This Jonathan is nowhere close to that. <laughs> I am not a Jonathan. I am a John. You are John. And you squeeze ketchup packets into a bottle so you're not matured. I really, really do. I feel like I've had times in my life where I did do that, but I'm just not doing that. Oh, right I have now. had times in my life where I've like smashed a tomato and tried to make my own ketchup. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Raw tomatoes are fucking disgusting. All right. If we're at the ketchup talk, how yeah, do we're at ketchup fucking talk, ketchup we're ingredients, so I think we should wrap <laughs> up here. Wrap, shut her down. All right, buddy. Well, I guess I'll see you later this week when we go to bobby mackey's and olive garden and see the hippos sounds fantastic and then we'll see everybody else on our youtube live show on december 22nd from 6 to 9 eastern for free on youtube for free for free and bonus after show in patreon and yeah i think that's it all right that's it okay good job idiot good work buddy Woo! i'll talk to you later okay okay bye okay bye bye Bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. I'm still the Enfield Poltergeist. Bye. Bye.